in this industry. My name is Jake Schofield, uh, owner, operator, sole proprietor of uh, Schofield Welding and Jacob Schofield Welding LLC. Um, the way I got involved in this was complete accident. I failed welding school in high school, dropped out of high school when I was 17 years old, finished later. Um, wanted to train horses, that's all I wanted to do. So I moved to Texas when I was 17, went down there, worked for a guy for I think a year. And we woke up at 2 o'clock every morning, went out, we're cutting horses every day, went to bed at 9 o'clock every night. We got paid $800 a month to be there. So like, I think we added it up, I think it was like 15 cents an hour or something, it was perfect. It worked out great. <laughs> if you didn't want to do nothing. I roped with a guy that, um, that was a welder and his brother needed a helper. His, his helper drug up on him and left him there. Well, I said, man, I ain't sure I want to do that. I said, what, what's it pay? He said, you'll make 2,500 bucks a week. And I was like, well, game on, all right, let's go. So I left, went out there, did that, got my butt chewed out every day, hated this dude. Uh, used to be a catcher for the Cubs. Okay, so this was a three-brother trio. I mean, the two brothers were welders, the other brother was a helper. The one brother that was a welder was a catcher for the Texas Rangers. The other brother was a catcher for the Cubs, and the other brother was a pitcher for the Texas Rangers. They all wound up in the oil field. <laughs> Must have spent all their money. But uh, anyway, so I would get my butt chewed out every day by these guys. So I quit them, left, went back home, trained horses again. Uh, got tired of dealing with people and went to welding school back home in Idaho. Left a month later. Have you guys figured out that school wasn't my thing when I started? But I tell you what, if I would have finished that, my buddies that come out of school, TIG hands from the promised land, I mean straight up, they can TIG chrome, TIG stainless, they can do anything you want with a TIG torch, MIG, anything you want, stick, anything you want. They taught them everything. You guys have such an opportunity right now that you get to weld every single day. When I started, I was a helper, and then I went back out as a helper, and the welders won't let you use their equipment. So you got to fork out, you know, you're making this much money, but you got to pay for a hotel room, you got to pay for all this other stuff. Got to go buy your machines. Then you get to sit in the motel room and, you know, hope that you get to go out and practice. They might give you a little pipe, whatever. So the opportunity you guys have right now is huge because you get to go out and weld every day. Nothing is going to make you a better welder than practicing. I mean, you're going to strike an arc every day, and it's the only thing that's going to make you better. You can read, you can watch, you can do anything you want, and unless you strike an arc, it's not going to make you any better. So, the opportunity you guys got is huge. Do not leave school. If you can freaking go out and pig and stick and make, you're going to make a lot of money in this. So, one of the things, where's the one? There we go. All right. Networking is one of the biggest things that you guys are going to do in this industry. You will starve to death if you do not know anybody in it. Now, what's going to happen is you guys are going to graduate. N nobody owns a truck here, right? Welding machine, truck, nothing like that. You guys are going to go out as single hand welders. You can make a hundred grand a year, no problem, being a single hand welder. Okay. You Google welder, you're going to make thirty-four thousand bucks a year, is what they say. Okay, that's for people that don't know nobody. I want, okay, who, who in here has everybody's phone number in this room? Raise your hand. You will all starve to death. Every single one of you will starve to death. Like, you have to get to know people. Everyone in this room is going to be a welder eventually. Everybody in this room is going to split up, leave, and have a job somewhere. When you're starving to death, when you're starving to death, anybody in here, you got all these phone numbers. How many people we got in here? One, two, okay, whatever. 10, 15, whatever. Okay. See, that's why, that's why I have a helper. <laughs> all right, so I want everybody in here to have my phone number. I'm going to put a piece of paper out, and I want everybody's phone number in this room. Phone number, your name, your email address, because eventually I'm going to be out of work, and you guys might have a job for me, vice versa. If you do not put your name on that piece of paper, do not call me. Okay? 
So this is a brotherhood, sisterhood, whatever you want to call it. It's the only way you guys are going to keep in work. You guys' program is like, it's an incredible program. Nobody else that I've ever seen will teach you how to lay a branch out. Nobody else is going to teach you how to weld one out. Nobody else is going to give you that much pipe to weld and practice on. It's a big deal. Plus your teacher is a CWI, so he gets to nitpick everything you do. It's perfect. You got a lot of people in here have the mentality to sit in a corner and not, not want to talk, not want to talk to anybody, right? Obvious, because not everybody in here has everybody's phone number, which you should all have everybody's phone number. Anyways, you've got to completely change your mindset on that. If you see a welder at a gas station, you have no idea how many times I've gotten a job. Don't know this dude from anybody. Walk up to him and say, hey man, you know where there's work? I was in North Dakota, got laid off. I had a job the next day because I did that. X-ray tech, superintendent. Being in this industry, resumes are not your, they're not your deal. I'm not saying you shouldn't turn them in. They're not going to get you work, like knowing people. <coughs> I can turn in a hundred resumes and if I know one superintendent looking for a job, I'm going to work. Those hundred resumes go to the bottom of the list every week and they're going to just keep turning in resumes on top of it. So you got to know people, you guys. Networking is going to be the number one biggest thing you do. Read. Seriously, like, well, read or watch something that is going to teach you how to do something. Okay? Good. How many of you guys want to learn how to sell something? You're going to have to. It's one of the biggest things you're going to do. If you guys ever look up Grant Cardone, I mean, write him down, whatever it takes, look him up. 99% of your guys' jobs are going to be won over a phone call. What makes you different than the guy behind you, or this superintendent already knows 100 welders, why does he need to hire you? These are things you guys have to study. How to talk on the phone, how to have a personality on the phone. I mean, if you, call, if you get on the phone and you go, hey, hey man, I, I need a job, you, you got any places for me? Yeah, no. You guys have got to learn how to have a personality over a phone call because that's how you're going to get to work. Simple. So you got to study, I mean, cold calls. I know nobody here, I hate calling people on the phone, they drive me nuts, but I've learned how to do it and it's made me probably a million and a half dollars. So. It's something you got to know how to do. Um, Guys, what he's talking about, I mean, a month and a half ago, two months ago, him and I never spoke. Mm -hmm. Never spoke on the phone. But taking the initiative to do a little bit of research, find his email address, find his phone number, you know, utilizing the internet for what it's intended for, research, found out who he is, watched his videos, and I started watching his videos, and he would allude to things like hunting and fishing and trapping and things like this. This is all stuff that I'm into. So I'm going, this is going to be a cakewalk to talk to this mm -hmm. dude because we have so much in common. It took one phone call from me, leaving him a message, one phone call from him to me, and boom, talked on the phone that easy. You know. Yeah. So as soon as you make that communication... It became it became easy. I have people going, how the heck are you getting him to come to Dodd City? Yeah. <laughs> Off the feather, huh? So we're in. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, so you guys you gotta know how to do that stuff. Now on the financial end of this deal, I'm gonna tell you you can make so much freaking money doing this. But you've gotta be smart with your money. I'll tell you in 2015 I lost everything. I was making $150,000 a year, working nine months out of the year, and then I'd go take the rest of the year off, you know? I lost everything I had except for my truck, and it was not a good deal. I had old timers that told me straight up, they said, you need to save every penny you got because eventually, like right now you're eating chicken, you're going to be eating feathers. Every market has its up and down. Like uh, 2015, the oil prices crashed. What you guys are learning right now is the TIG, the MIG, everything. I did not know that stuff. I knew how to downhill weld. That's all I knew how to do. High pressure gas lines, that's what I did. And, man, it freaking ate my lunch. 
I bought a seventeen thousand dollar welding machine, had it custom made. It was built, little SA two hundred, chopped, ready to go. Sold that thing for five grand, just to make sure the bank that I was renting my truck from did not come and get my truck. <laughs> so you guys have got to think about what you're doing with money. Um, kind of the potential of money that you guys can make. Let me explain how how. How an oil company is going to split your guys' checks up. So as single hand welders, you're not going to get rig paid. When you guys buy a truck and you become rig welders, they're going to pay you anywhere from $14 an hour to $18 an hour for your truck. That's more than most people make, and it's just because you own a truck. Okay? So it's called split check. On the last job I worked, we got $45 an hour. $15 a day, I mean $15 an hour on my truck, and then $150 per diem. This is your living money. All right, so in a day, I mean, let's just say that's 100 bucks. Man, math's not my biggest thing. That's why he's calculator. <clears throat> so we got 0, 1, 4, 5, 6, 70 bucks, right? $70 an hour to go work. I mean, that's is it? You shaking your head? Did I do my math right? Yeah. <coughs> All right. Okay. So seventy bucks an hour. What? No, 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 no. Let, let's hear it, man. Come on, like, let me know. I was like, I thought you were supposed to subtract it, but I was playing. No, no, no. So this is this is non-taxable. This isn't taxable. So you guys are basically making you know twenty-five bucks an hour, non-taxable money. It's all in your pocket. This is taxable. And this is where it eats your lunch. But $70 an hour, I mean, you're going to get overtime on all this. That's how that works. Usually, 60 hours a week or less is part time. You do not want to work 60. How many of you guys are willing to work if the money's there for you? I mean, yeah. So let me tell you, and this isn't bragging, I'm just giving you guys an idea on what you can make. Last weekend, they were in a bind for welders. I made $2,000 for two days worth of work. And I made maybe 15 welds. Okay? The money is out there if you guys will just go get it. But it's knowing people. I can promise you that if you do not know enough people, you will not make this kind of money. Okay, now this is called a split check. This is when you're an employee for the company. <clears throat> what I'm doing right now is I'm a contractor. I make $70 an hour straight. So sometimes it works better to be split check, sometimes it doesn't. But on the last job I was on, I made $110 an hour for being there. You gotta supply everything on this, you don't have to supply anything on this. So that's kind of you guys' money end of it. Anybody have questions? Do you get per diem as well as being on as a contractor? Correct? Sometimes. Sometimes. On the job I'm on right now, I do not. But you can always rig something up. What's that? <coughs> on your truck, do you already have all your electrodes and everything set up? Or does it come uh, so, if you're split chick, you're going to go test with rod. 90% okay. of the time, they'll have rod better at the test site for you. Okay. But, if they don't, and you don't have rod on your truck, okay. you're screwed. <laughs> so, split check, they're going to provide everything for you. Oxygen bottles, acetylene all your rod, all your consumables, everything. On this, you're gonna to wanna to call ahead, figure out what rod you're using, go buy it, and then you're gonna go test. You gotta provide everything consumable-wise for this. Most of the time. Sometimes, like there's some companies that'll provide everything. They'll pay you straight contract because they don't wanna deal with the tax end of it. And then, uh, and then they'll provide everything for you too. So, anyways, anybody else got questions? What are your questions, man? I mean, you're like here, like trying to figure out if this is what you want to do. What are you into? The money end of it? What? I've been into it Have you? Yeah. Good. So, like, what's the motivation for it? You don't want to make the money? Yeah. <laughs> Everybody wants to make money, right? Yeah. yeah. All right. One thing he's talking about about the money. You guys also have to understand on that. On that seventy or that forty-five dollars an hour, you know, he's, they're not withholding taxes on that. Okay, they're not withholding any taxes on that. So you're getting these fat checks, 
and then come February 15th, you get a 1099 that says, 10 1099s that say you've made this much money this year, then you go to your accountant and you show this to your accountant and the accountant says, guess what? 28% of this, probably more like 32% of this, you have to pay back to Uncle Sam because that money has not been withheld from your check. So now you got to understand that when you get paid, you can't go out and blow all this money on a new camper and a new truck and a new welder and everything else because at the end of the year, Uncle Sam's going to come for his portion. Every time. It. Every time. Every time. So, so well, when you are making that kind of money, you have to look ahead. That's why I tell you guys, number one, you need to look at, look at number one, a financial advisor. Talk to a financial advisor. Number two, you need to get a good accountant that can tell you the things that you can deduct, the things you can't deduct, the things that you can uh, depreciate um, throughout your taxes so you're not having to pay in as much and you're being able to utilize, utilize what you have available to you. When you got a $200,000 check and the IRS is expecting 35% <coughs> and you figure out how to, you know, cause like as a contractor, I'm right off my well machines, I can write off I mean, I bought three well machines this year. I've got all my consumables, all my fuel, every time I go out to dinner. And I give that stuff to my accountants, and they're the ones that take care of everything. But usually on the split check end of it, so on the contract end of it, they're not gonna pull nothing out. You're getting every penny of that. It is your responsibility to take care of this. On this, they're gonna pull your taxes from your 45. Most of the time. Sometimes they won't. Sometimes they'll make this look like a contract check and give it to you. And then now you're back in the same pickle. So you got to be buying things. You got to be learning how to write things off. Receipts. You got to start practicing keeping receipts. I mean, it's going to save your butt. That's exactly. I mean, you guys, that comes down to the network in and of it. Because if you guys will go out and go be helpers, now you have, you know, 100 people on this job. I don't care if they're bold up hand superintendents, if they're welders or helpers everybody's phone number get everybody because eventually everybody's splitting up everybody's getting laid off that's the one thing about being a welder is you are working to the end of a job and then you're getting laid off it's just part of it <clears throat> but that's what makes it so valuable is because we are now mobile fabrication shops basically we show up we do the job but if you have everybody's freaking phone number these guys if you are in the pipeline world or in the oil field or whatever these guys have millions of phone numbers. I mean, you guys think the mafia has a lot of phone numbers? You wait till you meet some pipeliners, because they can word travels fast. Well, the pipeline is like a mafia. It is, basically, yeah. I mean, it's, it's a niche. It is hard to get into, but once you are in, that's how you stay in it. Because if you only have your one welder's phone number and you run out of work, you've got one guy to call, you better pray that he has somewhere for you to go. <coughs> Everybody's phone number and you guys will stay busy. Even when times get hard, we can stay busy. If you guys run out of work, say the oil field dropped out. I went to the plumbers, house plumbers. We built potato plants for them, that's what we did. 